what's good? We, we back with another Larry Bird. I had to redo the video because I ain't gonna lie, like, it wasn't good. Like, it was shit quality and all that. But I'm back. Let's get into it. In the 1980s, Larry Bird and Kevin McHale were two of the most dominant players in the NBA, leading the Boston Celtics to three championships and establishing themselves as indelible legends of the game. But what many fans may not know is the complexity of their relationship both on and off the court. The legends were tight, but it still didn't stop Larry Legend from pranking his fellow Celtics star. I was uh, getting ready to start a game, get up to the jump ball, and, and, and Larry said, you know, just, just out of the blue, he goes, go ahead, Kevin, tell Elvin Hayes what you told me. And I didn't tell him anything. And I said, well, go ahead and tell him, like, you said you were going to kick his ass. And I was like, oh, man. And Elvin Hayes, <laughs> Yeah, he told him that. <laughs> He's just looking at me. Well, at that point, it was hard to say no. I didn't say anything. I said, oh, I guess so. But, you know, Larry just got stuff started up. Yeah, Larry is a funny guy. Charles Barkley is one of the most recognizable figures in the NBA. Not only was he a heck of a player, but he has also transitioned into one of the best analysts on TV, a position that is enhanced by his wealth of knowledge and his overall experience. That being said, there was a time when even Sir Charles was just a young man looking to make a name for himself. And back when he first got started, Chuck was easily starstruck. Unfortunately, it was his youthful naivety that led him to be pranked. With my first All-Star game, and Kareem sitting at the back, and Bird and McHale, I said, man, I, I want to go meet Kareem. I never met him. And they said, go back there and say hello to him. I walked back. And he's back there reading. And I said, hey, Mr. Jabbar. He looks up. I'm reading. <laughs> I said, okay. I turn around. Mikhail and Bird are laughing their ass. <laughs> Damn, they sucking the hell out of you, dude. Kareem said, now, I'm reading. Can you see? I'm, I'm reading my favorite book. And then they, they was clowning his ass. It was like, <laughs> they got fat ass Barkley. Damn. That's it, it was clowning the hell out of him and shit. Damn. In Spike Lee's 1986 film, She's Gotta Have It, Mars Blackman, a character played by Lee himself, refers to Larry Bird as the ugliest SOB in the NBA. This line caused some controversy at the time, with some people accusing Lee of racism. Lee later defended the line, saying that it was simply a reflection of Mars's character, who is known for his blunt and often offensive remarks. Lee also said that he respected Bird's playing ability, even if he didn't find him attractive. In 2022, Lee spoke on meeting Bird for the first time and the anxiety he had before meeting the legend. I tell a story about Larry Bird. My first film, my character, Mars Blackman, is having a discussion about basketball. White boy's bad, you gotta give him credit. And my character said not a nice thing about Larry Bird. He's the ugliest motherfucker to me, that's what he is. So the first... <laughs> oh, shit. Damn, that's, that's crazy. That... <laughs> time capital one commercials it's a parrot he's got a name larry bird hey, hey guys larry legend hey who's that my bracket buddy charles Barkley. the first larry bird i'm like oh man life so i was really nervous i made a point that when larry comes to the set i'm gonna go to his trailer so i knocked on the trailer it was just him alone i said mr burke i come in i was nervous and i said larry I apologize for like anything, you know, that you might have taken offense to. He said, Spike, man, I forget about that. And we can tap up. I, I really want to say that because I was nervous. Pharrell Brandon played for three. Yeah, like, he wasn't worried about, like, the past and shit. Like, he, he's a grown-ass man. Like, he worrying about, like, moving on and shit. Like, that's real. That's, like, real shit. So, you got to respect it. Teams during his 11-year career in the NBA. He's a two-time All-Star and was a key starter on three NBA franchises before a series of injuries ultimately forced him to play his last game at 31 years old. Brandon was selected 11th overall in the 1991 NBA draft by the Cleveland Cavaliers. After a strong rookie season, Brandon was named to the NBA All-Rookie Team. 
He spent his first three and a half seasons as the backup to all-star point guard and Cavs legend Mark Price. In 2021, he recalled how badass Larry Bird was on the court, even at the end of his legendary career. Bird is a psychologically assassin. In what way, though? We was up one. He said, who is guarding me? As we come out of timeout, I says, Craig Elo. He says, why you got that white boy on me? <laughs> <The time. laughs> Damn, he got offended. Another white boy was on. <laughs> Damn. He was like, nah, this little ass <laughs> white boy can't guard me or some shit. Damn. Don't put no white boy on me. He said, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get in the corner. Then Johnson going to pass it to me and I'm going to hit the last thing was shot is over. I told Joe, what can I say? Hey, man, listen. The ball is going to right, but everybody knows what's going to right first. Do whatever you can. Craig, Gerald, just cover him. He hit the shot on him and jumped on right? He was getting them off of him like this. He walked off and said, Legend. <laughs> Larry Bird, man. <laughs> Larry Bird was a highly anticipated rookie when he joined the Boston Celtics in 1979. He had been a star at Indiana State, and he was expected to be a major contributor right away. However, Bird's arrival was not without its challenges. He was a white player in a league that was predominantly black, and he was often stereotyped as being soft or not tough enough. One of the people who was skeptical of Bird was Cedric Maxwell, a veteran forward who was already a key member of the Celtics. Maxwell had a reputation for being a tough player, and he was not afraid to speak his mind. In one of their first practices together, Maxwell quickly learned this Bird guy is something special. Got I walk in the first day of camp, them guys were on the floor stretching, and here comes the white savior, here comes this, here comes that. I think that you would say that most black players at the time were racist in, in the sense that we did not think that you could find a, a white guy who could play better. I mean, I mean, he kept that shit real. I mean, at the, at the time, I mean, like, how they looking at it, like, it wasn't no white American player that can hope. Hell, even no white overseas player at that time. So, I mean, shit. But he proved they had their own. Shit. Than any black guy. I sort of enjoyed it. Because I knew I was going to battle him all day. I'm thinking, oh, he's slow. He can't get off a shot. He's not that strong. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a layup. The Curtis and Sidney didn't last. Damn, long. that's insulting. <laughs> that man said, it's going to be a layup. Well, well, let me post this skinny ass. Uh, oh, this is gonna be a layup. Hell nah. It, cra- it crazy as hell. Oh, they didn't even make it through the first practice. They were cut. Bam. Locks down the jump shot. Maybe that was luck. Gets the ball again. Bam. Locks down another jump shot. Now I'm thinking, like, okay, hey, you know what? I'm gonna D this guy up. I'm gonna show him his life. 20 feet away. Man said, I'm going to D him up. I'm going to show him this life. Bam. 25 feet away. Bam. I, my mind just goes so good. Damn, this white guy can play. James Worthy was a key member of the Showtime Lakers, one of the most dominant teams in NBA history. He was a versatile player who could score, rebound, and defend at a high level. He was also a clutch performer in the playoffs, and he helped the Lakers win three NBA championships. Worthy's battles with Larry Bird were some of the most exciting games of the 1980s. They were two of the best players in the league, and they always brought their best when they faced each other. But after all these years, Worthy apparently still hates Larry Legend. Larry could just flat out score. And give you numbers and uh, and be talking shit. There were times I had to guard him. You know the play is coming, but he would tell you it's coming. And he says, if you trail, I'm going to trail into the lane and do a little floater. And he said, if you fucking pop, he said, if you try to get over the top, he said, I'm going to pop to that corner. (laughs) Damn. I mean, that's real savage. I mean, because he let you know what he was going to do, and he did it too. That's how you knew he was on some a whole nother level. And then, too, like, Larry Bird was, like, that first white American player. I'm not talking about overseas. I'm not talking about Luca and Dirk. They overseas. I'm talking about the first white franchise player even at that time. They, you never even seen nothing even close to that. That's the craziest shit. Like, Larry Bird was, like, that first 
white American player, like franchise player at that. Like that shit crazy. Bust a jump on your face. I'm like, fuck you. I'm, I'm all up on it. <laughs> you know, I got a shirt tail. I'm holding it. You know, I'm like, you. You, know, like, you know where I'm from. I'm from Gastonia. I'm like, hey, suck it. Sure enough, man. The ball comes in. <laughs> DJ takes a couple dribbles. I'm quick. I'm quick enough. I think I can get over the top. I, I, I get over the top. I get out there, but he pops to the corner and I'm running. He kind of waiting, you know. Waiting. Uh, <laughs> he was an asshole. Craig Elo was a professional basketball player who played in the NBA for 14 seasons. Elo is perhaps best remembered for his role in one of the most famous plays in NBA history as Michael Jordan hit a game-winning jumper over him in what is known as the shot. Elo played for the Cavaliers for seven seasons, and he too suffered quite a bit from the trash talk and the brilliance of Larry Bird. There was one game in, in Cleveland where he was having a pretty rough first half, and in the old days in Cleveland, you walked off the court the same way at halftime, and I kind of puffed up on him and walked beside him and was like, yeah, you're one for ten. I was like, that's defense, you know, and he just kind of looked at me and said, there's two halves, and he came back out and hit about 10 in a row on me, and the last one was left-handed, and he asked me if my mother was watching because uh, he wanted to embarrass me, so, yeah, so he was... <laughs> I mean, I said, is your mother watching? Damn, it sounded like he tried to sign it, sign your <laughs> Is your mom watching so I could bust your ass? Damn, imagine, imagine. While Larry Bird always tried to keep a low profile, he was just too much to overcome. Playing in Boston on some excellent Celtics teams, he was always in the spotlight. His three MVP awards and three championships, along with his trash-talking ability, didn't help keep him out of people's mind, especially when he was playing against their favorite team. In his Hall of Fame speech, the legend shared a funny but true story on the time he got death threats from the opposite team's fans, mid-game. Game five of the championship series, we was out there. We were down by two or three points at halftime, and KC come walking out, and he called me over he said larry he said i hate to tell you this he said there's been a death threat on your life so you're gonna make a decision whether you want to finish the game or go back and sit in the locker room wait till we get done or leave the arena that's why i'm going to play so casey just turns and walks away i go right to the layup line on the other side and i look over here's come casey pointing at me i walk over to casey i said now what he goes well the horn's getting ready below here larry he said whatever you do don't come to the huddle. He said, could you please stand out here? He said, could, could you please stand out here at center court? He said, you never know. The guy might be a bad shot. So just when the horn blows, I walk over to KC. He's drawing up a play. I put my arm around him. He looks up, puts his head down, squats down a little bit so the guys are surround him. He goes, thanks a lot. Bird was part of the base. Damn, it sounded like Bird wasn't trying to hear that shit. Give me the ball and move out the way. That's what it sounded like to me. There's front office from 1997 until 2022 when he stepped down from an active role. During his time there, Pacers players must have been in awe when he was around. In 2022, Lance Stevenson, who played for the Pacers for seven seasons, has added another story to the great Larry Bird legend. By Lance, during an Indiana Pacers practice, 60-year-old Larry Bird decided to show off his shooting stroke right in front of his young players. So we, uh, we, we stretching, right? So the whole team is just stretching. And Larry just... Walks on the walks on the court like, grabbed the ball and started jacking threes like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. like I'm like, I'm looking at everybody. I'm like, do y'all see this right now? And he's made, he made like at least ten in a row threes like just walked in, came in, looked at us and was like, looking at us stretch and hit like ten threes in a row and walked off and, and sat like he ain't do nothing. Like it was fucking like fold his legs and just sitting there looking at us. I'm like, yo, this guy <laughs> That man came in and had that jumper still, man. Like uh, that's how that's how you know like certain players don't really work on their game when he came in and shot the ball at his age. Just imagine like how old he was and, and stuff like that. 
like damn like and y'all i'm pretty sure it was some players at that time on the pacers that couldn't even shoot couldn't even shoot the damn ball they couldn't even do nothing like that and they bench and bench warmers and all type of shit that's crazy nice <laughs> that's larry legend right there <laughs> I'm like, man, that's the legend right there. <laughs> Apart from being an elite scorer, Larry Legend was also known for his superb trash-talking skills. Bird was so gifted that he would often tell his defenders exactly how he planned on scoring and would end up pulling that exact same move. The brutal confidence he had when playing in the NBA at the highest level was absolutely staggering, and these stories epitomizes that perfectly. Larry Bird would put fear in me and everyone else the dude could jump wasn't fast wasn't athletic the dude just knew how to play so larry got in the game one time and for some reason chuck daly puts me in and larry looks around and goes uh what's up sal i said no nah. he goes Are you on me i said yeah i got size on you right now i've been watching every movie he goes y'all not double teaming <laughs> looking around he goes yo I go, nah, it's just me, fella. He goes, mouse in the house, dude. Huh. We'll just tell you where he's going, shoot it in your face, talk shit to you, and run back down the floor. Right. He catches the ball and Learn. looks over at our bench and goes, I'm going to take two dribbles right, cross over left. And he catches the ball, he does this, and he shoots it. He says, Sal, you better ask for a double team, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he takes his two dribbles, cross over, pull up jump shot, wow. and looks over at our bench, and we're all looking at each other like, is he for real? <laughs> he was the biggest Man. trash talker back in the day, but he would back it up. The fact that he's able to back it up made it that much special. Around the NBA, everyone has their first moment in the league they still remember. Whether it's a trash talk exchange or getting owned by a more experienced player, those memories stay with you forever. But things might get even worse when that vet player who's welcoming you is the trash talking goat himself, Larry Bird. With the number of players he trash talked and took to school, if the NBA ever introduces a trash talking award, it should be named after Larry Bird. The guy was just fearless when it comes to mind games as rookie Eddie Johnson found out the hard way. Larry Bird basically taught me how to trash talk. It was my second game of my career, and I'm scared to death already. And he walks out, and he just stands next to me, and he leans over and he looks at me. And I didn't really pay him any attention. He said, do you honestly think you're going to guard me? <laughs> then he stands up and he looks over and I... I mean, but that's how you're supposed to feel, like, when you when you that damn good. <laughs> and you feel like nobody can guard you. Like, I mean, that's how you know you got confidence in your game. Like, that's what anything, like, you have confidence or you you you, you, you either self-made or you bitch-made. Like, he pretty much said dude couldn't guard him. Like, because you would be surprised. Like, a lot of people fit in the bitch-made category. Like, a lot of people. And bitch made so, soft, soft as hell. They're not even uploading or nothing. Like, and you say you was going to do TikTok. Like, somebody said they're going to do TikTok, and they don't even do it. Like, they don't even keep their word. I mean, that's how you know they whack. They whack as hell in real life. They're whack. Bench and he looks at Kyle. You all think this rookie go guard me? Man, I'm gonna bust you up. Just okay. right in my ear. Then finally, he walks around, stands in front of me. So I'm gonna tell you something right now. I'm gonna wear your ass out. Game starts and he's just wearing me out. And he came down. He said, "I bet you can't do this." And he raises up from Steph Curry right, and he shoots an air ball. And I look at him. He like that don't matter. It's the fact that I can do it to stay in the game. I yeah, he had the green light the whole game. He even said, at least I could do that. Damn, yeah, a lot of players couldn't do that. <laughs> you try to do that, y'all ass going to be sitting on the bench. Y'all ass probably going to be out the league. You try to do some shit like that. Damn, he let you know he had the green light. Like, it's a difference between me and you, pretty much. Damn. Savage. In 1992, the best players from various colleges were called in to face the Dream Team for their first scrimmage. Future All-Stars, Chris Webber, Penny Hardaway, Alan Houston, Grant Hill, and Jamal Mashburn were part of the team dubbed the College All-Stars. According to Mashburn, he, along with his fellow select teammates, 
given first-hand experience of Larry Bird's trash talking the very first time they met Larry Legend. Larry Bird, you don't realize how big Larry Bird is until you stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He walked by us, he says, y'all those college guys? And he looked at us and he said, get some fucking rest, it's gonna be a long week, and walked off. And we get back to the hotel, and Ronnie Rogers said, hey Larry, you ain't hit a jumper since 84. We ain't think none of it. The next day we came in, and I'd never seen this, and this one I was like, this is different breed. Larry Bird got the ball on Rodney Rogers, and every time he was about to make a move, he told him what he was going to do. One dribble, pull up, going left, off glass. <laughs> <laughs> One dribble going right, spin, shot, bucket. He scored nine times or eight times in a row and said, young fella, look like 84, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he, 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 he let you know. He let you know shit look like 84, ain't it? That shit, I could still do this shit. He, he made that little ass boy sit down and... He he ran and cried to his he ran and cried and ran to the bench and <laughs> imagine 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 getting your ass busted by Larry Bird imagine but shit he he let you know shit I respect it though like Larry Bird got busy he got busy for real. last time he made <laughs> <laughs> the playoffs are where superstars shine adrenaline and pure talent will take over. If you believe you can't be stopped, usually you can't. However, sometimes when your game goes to a new level, this challenge inspires your competitor to wrestle the spotlight away from you. This happened in Game 7 of the 1988 Eastern Conference semifinals, and the stars were Larry Bird and Dominique Wilkins. The human highlight reel and Larry Legend couldn't be any more polar opposite in their playing styles. Bird was pure finesse and poetry in motion. Wilkins was more shock and awe. Boston won the first two contests. Then the upstart Hawks took the next three. However, Boston was not going to throw in the towel as they were able to salvage their season with a Game 6 win in Atlanta. Game 7 ended up being a gunfight, a duel, and battle of two wills. Here's the crucial moments of Game 7, told by Wilkins. We knew going to Game 6, I said, man, we could we could advance and we can beat these guys. And we blew our opportunity. After the game, Barrett made a prediction. He said, Atlanta blew their opportunity. I'm guaranteeing a win in Boston. Our shot's going to be dropping a little bit better, and we're going to be running a little bit faster. So I'd say Sunday's going to be a big win for the Celtics. We get to Boston. Yes, yeah, whoever guarded me tonight will have a long night. Unfortunately, Bird was saying the same thing in other locker room to, to his teammates. He only had 12 points going to fourth quarter. Kevin Willis, it was me and Larry. We were running down the court. Kevin reached up me, put his hands, and Bird said, said, don't let this so-and-so score and whatnot. I'm like, what you doing? Do you wake up a sleeping giant? <laughs> and his eyes got that big and he got hot. Bird's turn, Bird snaps free. Comes up with a shot and the Celtics lead. It's Bird. It was a shootout in the fourth quarter. It came down to the last shot. That's it. Boston, 118. Atlanta, 116. The war in Israel is being used by the media to cover this up. I woke up to a free 16. Oh in the 1980s, Wilkins and Bird, two of the greatest players in NBA history, engaged in an exciting rivalry. The two players who played in different ways were equally dominant on the court and contributed to numerous memorable plays and deep playoff runs by their respective teams. But despite their strong battles on the court and early difficulties, Wilkins and Bird respected one another as rivals. This wasn't the case early in Wilkins' NBA career. Rookie Wilkins had to earn the respect of Larry Legend. By Wilkins, Bird didn't even want to shake hands with him, and that's what will remind him of their first meeting. I mean, we're in the Boston Guard, I'm in awe because this is stink of the Boston Garden. And I remember the first I mean, we was at the jump circle and I like, go shake Larry Bird's hand. He put both hands behind his back. You know, like I'm like, you know what, maybe he's just getting into the game. You know? <laughs> I'm trying to give him the benefit down the first play of the game gone. He said, I don't know where they got you guarding me, Holmes. <laughs> Shoot to the three. Damn. Damn, he pulled the Holmes card. Damn. I mean shit. He, he told you shit like he didn't respect you. He didn't respect you guarding him. Like that's how he felt. 
and I wasn't mad he made the three. I thought, this son of a bitch just called me Holmes. Oh, man, I was so mad. So I'm coming down the left side, and I go up, and the fast break, he comes out, and I'm pumping it behind my head, and he jumped. They find Wilkins, look out. I said, God, boom. <laughs> He's sitting down on the ground. I'm pointing like this. He said, hey, Wilk, I'm like, what? He said, I like you. You have balls, but I'm still getting 40 on your ass. <laughs> Larry. Damn. I'm still going to get dropped 40 on your ass. Damn. Bird and Magic Johnson started the golden era of the NBA during the 1980s. It continued in the 1990s as a myriad of basketball legends graced the hardwood, each leaving an indelible mark on the sport. Bird was the catalyst for countless tales shared by NBA legends of that era. From Magic Johnson's fierce rivalry to Michael Jordan's admiration, every basketball great from that time seems to have a Larry Bird story, a testament to his unique skill, determination, and enduring impact on the game they all loved. Here's another 90s legend telling a Larry Bird story. The great Utah Jazz power forward Carl Malone. I remember sitting on the bench watching Kevin McHale and Larry Bird and Larry Bird did something to me I'm still marveled at this and he got so many people it was a timeout and one of our teammates Bart Kofold had a camera right he's taking pictures so Larry Bird came over there and looked at our bench and he said uh three-pointer from right over here. <laughs> so I'm sitting over there looking like that <laughs> Babe Ruth <laughs> calling your shot already. Point. Right? Yeah. So I say I'm sitting there looking. He looked down at the floor. Hell, everybody looked down at the floor. He like... Like he threw something. And he hit the three. Oh! Can you believe that? And I remember Kevin kind of looking over at the bench like, this is going to be a long night. There's no question Bill Walton played a significant role in helping the 1985-86 Boston Celtics win a championship. In his first year with the team, Walton came off the bench to spell both Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish. The oft-injured Walton, who missed three full NBA seasons because of injury, played 80 games that season and was named the NBA's sixth man of the year. In 2020, Walton shared a great story on how Bird took over a game that was seemed to be over already in the start of the third quarter. Nobody wants to ever take the ball out of bounds because they know they're never going to get it back. Larry Bird always took the ball out of bounds. He's going to take the ball out of bounds, and that referee comes, and the referee hands the ball to Larry to start the third. We're down 25. Larry takes the ball and pushes it back into the midsection of the referee, so that he can't get away, and the referee is like startled, staggered. What's going on here? It was all right there, right in front of the Celtic bench. And Larry looks right into the soul, right through the eyes of that referee. And he says to him, we're not going to quit. You make sure you don't quit either. <laughs> just like... Uh, shit, he was a competitor. Like, he said, shit, don't rig this motherfucking game. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what he was saying. Like, shit. Don't you quit. <laughs> yeah, man. Hell no. But shit. That's how you know he was a competitor. Like, he wanted to win. That, that was the reason why he won three championships. Like, you got to give credit when it's due. Like, he was, he, Larry Bird was him for real. Like, fuck all the bullshit. Like, Larry Bird was him. You got to give credit when it's due. Like, like, you can't be hating on him and, and doing all that. Like, that's goofy. That's goofy shit. If you hating on a legend, you got to pay homage. You got to pay homage. You can't be on goofy shit. Like, it's, it's too many people that be on goofy shit. They be broke. Like, they're not even doing that. Like, it it sounds like they just be scared. <laughs> they be scared to, to walk out of their house, their parents' house and shit. <laughs> oh, shit. He, he go ghost and he go pussy in real life. He go ghost and pussy. But, yeah, like, Larry Bird was him. Like, you got to stop all the bullshit. Melted on the spot. Larry hit 11 straight shots to start the third, including seven threes. We were tied at the end of the third. We won in overtime. We did not need a plane to get home that night. Larry Bird, you're awesome. In 1986, the great Larry Bird won the NBA's first three-point contest. Everybody knows about his famous flex when walked into the locker room and asked his peers, who's coming in second? But after claiming victory and reuniting with his teammates, the sharpshooter was on a mission. If you bet against him, you were going to pay the 
the price, literally. As the story goes, some members of the Boston squad apparently doubted his chances. Not only did that skepticism push the forward to enter the contest, but it gave him the perfect opportunity to flex his metaphorical muscles after his win. So when the Celtics checked in an hotel to resume the regular season, Bird patrolled the lobby with a mini golf pencil and small notepad, collecting cash from teammates who made the mistake of betting against him in the three-point contest, and no one was allowed to postpone payment. In his exact words, if you don't have your money, I'll wait right here while you go back to your room and get it, Bird told teammates. I'm the three-point king. In the 1986 NBA Finals, it was the first time Hakeem, the dream, had played on the biggest basketball stage. Before game one, he was asked about facing the storied Boston Celtics franchise. The 23-year-old from Lagos, Nigeria, said he knew nothing about the Celtics history. I know nothing of this tradition. I am not from around here, he said. When Larry Bird heard what Hakeem said, Larry Legend offered to educate him about the 15 banners that hung from the Boston Garden rafters. We'd like to give him a two-week history lesson, Bird savagely replied. The legend went on to record... Uh, he said, I'm going to give you a two-week lesson on the damn court. <laughs> you know, man, whoop your ass. Like, you won't forget. Like, damn. Yeah, Larry Bird signed him during that uh, series. Like, he signed him. He signed him. He let him know, like, what was the real deal? Real deal. Two triple doubles in the series, including a takeover performance in Game Six. Larry got every rebound. Larry made every steal. He made every pass. He just literally did everything. The Celtics closed out the Rockets in that sixth game, and Bird won Finals MVP after averaging 24 points, 9.7 rebounds, and 9.5 assists for the series. Larry Bird, the greatest player I've ever played. When it comes to modern NBA trash talkers, Gary Payton sits near the top of the list. The glove was a relentless defender, and verbal warfare was part of his arsenal. In retirement, though, he's able to see things from a more removed perspective and dish out a few compliments. When Peyton was asked about Larry Legend's trash talk, not only did he confirm that Bird could talk a big game, but the former guard also admitted that he could back it up. He'll give it to you any way he wanted to, any way he wanted to. Larry Bird was called. He landed the guard, man, on his last leg. Bird used to tell me, look here, man, I'm going to shoot this mother and jump in your face right there in that corner. I can shoot a jumper anywhere I want to. He said, I'm going to make sure I tell you where I'm going to shoot the ball at. Wrap it up and bust your head open. All that shit. And I said, watch this. And I'm digging him up, and he slow balled me. And he said, young fella, what did I tell you I was going to do? And he turned around, raised up, looked around, it was all draw. <laughs> He's the coldest dude I ever seen with that shit, man. And I said, shit, I ain't going to mess with you no more. <laughs> and everybody talking about these great greats, they will be always mentioning him. He was the shit. Yeah, but that's homage, though. GP, the, uh, the, the goal of defense, you know what I mean? He even said it, like, he played in the league against him. Like, that's how you know he know the game of basketball. Not these goofy-ass analysts that never fucking hoop. Never even touch a net. And then you have some of these goofy-ass haters. Oh, 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 Magic. Oh, the, the, oh, the, oh Magic. Oh, this and that. And, uh, oh, bro. Let me know, bro. I, I could pull up the video of a hater talking shit. That he don't even know anything. Like he can't even shoot the ball his damn self. Like, like he can't even shoot. If you played professional basketball between 1979 and 1992, being asked to defend Larry Bird was the sporting equivalent of drawing the short straw. Even if you knew what the Boston Celtics star was going to do, stopping him was another story. Dominique Wilkins experienced that reality firsthand. Not only did he have to try and slow down the prolific scorer, but he was on the receiving end of some trash talk along the way. And while both men have long since retired, that verbal warfare is still going on. On January 26, 2023, Pacers president of basketball operations, Kevin Pritchard, took to Twitter to share some texts that he had received from Bird. The former forward, who spent time in Indianapolis as both a coach and an executive, had snapped a picture of a photo of him shooting a jumper over Wilkins. It wasn't enough to just send a picture, though. Larry Legend had to talk a bit of trash, writing, Can you please tell your boy to put a hand up? I think that is the pose for the statue. Once that screenshot hit social media, 
it made its way to Wilkins. The former Atlanta hawk simply responded, man the disrespect, with four crying laughing emojis. Based on his reaction, it's fair to say that Dominique Wilkins hasn't taken Bird's jab personally. At this point, he probably knows what it's like dealing with Larry Legend. When Reggie Miller was a rookie, he did his best to psych out the great Larry Bird and failed miserably. Luckily, this didn't stop Miller from having a storied NBA career. He was even fortunate enough to play for Bird from... Yo, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, bro. And to the haters, bro, kiss my ass, bro. Y'all not even on shit for real. Fuck the haters. Love the supporters, bro. The ones who unsubscribe, you was a never a day one. So it is what it is.